Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go. All your weather coverage in today's weather forecast will be focusing on a couple of fast moving storm systems that will bring snow to the north and rain to the south. And we'll be detailing the upcoming weather pattern as we end February and move into early March. It's looking very interesting, so we'll get into the details in that later on in today's weather forecast. Hope everybody's having a great Thursday morning out there so far and a great week so far. And looking at our February, it has been good for a lot of us folks that want an early spring out here, that is for sure. Looking up here at the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, into through the Ohio Valley and interior New England, and really all of Canada has been well above normal for the first half of February here. And the Pacific Southwest has been slightly below normal with our 15 day temperature anomalies out here across California, Nevada, Arizona, and parts of Western New Mexico. That's really the only below normal temperatures during that 15 day stretch in town. So that is what we're seeing. And looking at this morning's low temperatures, it is a bit of a shock to the system as you head out the door here across the Northern Rockies, the North Central Plains, the upper Midwest, or even the Northeast here as we have that fresh snow on the ground in some of these areas across portions there in New York City, up toward Hartford, up toward Boston there. Temperatures starting off into the teens, single digits up here further to the north toward the international border between Canada and the United States into places like the Dakotas, northern Minnesota, and Montana this morning. As we go into the afternoon, those colder areas will likely remain colder for afternoon highs. Temperatures will be into the teens and 20s to the north. And look at the vast difference in our temperatures further south across portions of the southern plains, the Gulf Coast, and the southeast coast here. Temperatures will be well into the 60s, if not into the 70s this afternoon. And if you like detailed weather breakdowns across North America through the year of 2024 and beyond, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and I will keep you covered with accurate weather forecasts right here on this channel and I would love to hit 100,000 subscribers on this channel by spring and each and every one of you that haven't subscribed can help me get there by subscribing to the channel down below it's also very important to press the like button down below it helps out more than you know so let's step back here let's look at the weather pattern across North America we have that ridge of high pressure up here that is with the reds, the oranges, the pinks up here into Alaska and the western Canadian provinces. That signifies drier weather, but also milder weather that far north. We have an active weather, though, across southern Canada and the northern tier of the United States, especially the Pacific Northwest, the northern plains, and up here into the upper Great Lakes region with fast moving what we call clipper systems, bringing some snow across the north. Meanwhile, as we have that across the north, North, that's kind of squashing our ridge further south here. That's why we're so warm today across the southern plains, the Gulf Coast, and the southeast because we have a ridge of high pressure. Again, ridges mean milder weather, but also drier weather, and that's what is keeping us warmer today. So let's look at our current weather conditions across the board here this morning. And you see a couple of different pieces of energy here. We have some light to moderate snow breaking out across eastern Wisconsin up toward Green Bay into the eastern UP of Michigan and north northern lower Michigan here this morning. Uh, some drizzle, some light rain down here to northern Indiana and southwestern lower Michigan as well. And then our second piece of energy entering into the Pacific Northwest, higher elevation snows, lower elevation rain and drizzle out there across the Pacific Northwest. Going through today, those two pieces of energy will be working in tandem. And as they do, we're going to be producing some snow here across the Great Lakes and across the Pacific Northwest. And what I mean in tandem is they're going to be moving in almost the exact same path as we go into today, into your Friday time frame, except maybe on Friday it looks like this storm's going to be a little bit further to the south across portions of Kansas, Missouri, the Illinois Valley here and getting into Indiana bringing some light snow there. Another clipper right behind it there into the Rockies and then as we go into Saturday could bring us some snow up here to the northeast New York City again back in towards Hartford there ba uh, the Baltimore region perhaps and maybe even up there toward Boston as well as we go into Saturday and then even into Sunday here 
Just these clipper systems across the north bringing some lighter snow events to the northern United States while we see rain or just dry weather overall further to the south with the split flow with our El Nino pattern we're in. So let's look here at our total precip across the western U.S. going through Sunday the 18th of February and some healthy totals out here into western Washington State, western Oregon, and northern California. Okay, we're seeing around one to three inches worth of rain and in a short amount of time, especially as a lot of this comes in Friday night, Saturday, and into Sunday, this could cause some flash flooding in localized areas into northwestern California, especially near the coast. There's a marginal to a slight risk of flash flooding there Saturday the 17th into Sunday the 18th this weekend, so make sure you're keeping an eye on that. But also, as we mentioned, the snow. This is going to be a lighter snowfall event with a lot of these clipper systems bringing very fast-moving snow across this region. And an hour here, an hour there of snow. And this will add up over the rest of the week and into the weekend. And you can see across mainly the northern U.S. Starting out west, more potent moisture right off the eastern Pacific Ocean. So more readily, we're going to be accumulating that snow. And higher elevation provides that lift as well. That's going to squeeze out some higher totals there, especially into western Wyoming, central Idaho, back there into the mountain ranges of Washington State and Oregon, and also the Sierra as well into portions of California, a lot of those areas over a foot of snow. Downstream, further to the east across the central U.S., an inch here, an inch there, really not that big of a deal. A lot of this will actually melt on contact, and we may just see a dusting to a half an inch in a lot of these areas just on the grassy surfaces as it has been so warm and then further east same thing really around one to two maybe three inches the heaviest amounts up here into southeastern Canada and the Great Lakes region here maybe northern lower Michigan a couple of inches of snow but again even here it's been warm as of recent so we're going to see a lot of this melt on contact and mainly just some grassy surfaces seeing the snowfall accumulation through the weekend time frame but if we do see some slushy roads out there make sure to take it slow this is a minor snowfall event overall across the north so not really that big of a deal just make sure to take it slow and you'll arrive to your destination safe and sound out there through the weekend now another aspect of this pattern is going to bring down some colder air now it's not going to be like january cold like we saw with 40 below zero wind chills but we're going to see a potent area of cold air across the east you can see that moving in across the upper midwest and the northern plains as we go into tomorrow on friday the 16th as we go into saturday that colder air will push down here into portions of the southern plains in the eastern U.S., and then as we go into Sunday, that'll move off the East Coast and we'll start to moderate our temperatures across the middle of the country for later in the weekend. So what does this look like? Here are your high temperatures going into tomorrow on Friday, February 16th. Colder to the north. These are your highs in the single digits here and the teens across southern Canada and also the northern U.S. We're still mild though. The cold front hasn't yet reached us down here near the Gulf Coast and the southern U.S., but it will as we go into Saturday morning. You can see here is your Saturday morning starting off here into the 20s across portions of the Southern Plains, the Deep South, and the Southeast. Teens and single digits further to the north. We will recover, but not a lot though. We're going to recover into the 20s and 30s. Much more of a wintry afternoon with our temperatures across the U.S. in general for your Saturday. And then as we go into Sunday, there's the freezing line. It goes all the way down here toward Jackson, Mississippi the Montgomery region, Atlanta, down here toward the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, the Baton Rouge area over here towards Lubbock, Texas. A lot of these areas will start to see temperatures at or below freezing for your Sunday morning. And then we'll recover nicely here. Again, we have bare ground with our snowfall as we go into the weekend likely. And some of these areas could pick up some snow, but a lot of this will still really remain bare ground as a lot of this will melt on contact. So our temperatures will readily move up into the 30s and 40s for your Sunday afternoon time frame. Now heading into next week, we start to see some major changes in the offing here on what the weather pattern looks like. We're going to get rid of that cold front. We're going to get rid of that colder air. And during that 19th through the 23rd time frame, really that third week here into February, a very nice ridge and a spring preview with our temperatures will be on the way and really setting up shop across the middle of the country. And a potent trough will be moving closer to the West Coast, bringing some unsettled weather to portions of California during this time. 
but let's look first at our temperature anomalies through next week because this is going to be potent and we're getting into the third week in February. The sun angle is getting a little bit higher. The days are getting a little bit longer. So our temperatures will be getting a bit warmer as well across the middle of the country. And this is around the warmest period here by the middle of next week around that Wednesday time frame or so. Look at these highs out here into the 40s and 50s to the north, 60s, 70s, further to the south here, a little bit of a spring preview as we go into next week. And some of these numbers may actually be conservative. So we'll keep an eye on that. And looking at precipitation through next week, very dry with that high pressure system and that rig over the middle of the country as you know that brings a lot of drier weather and milder weather as we like to say and then further off to the west that trough coming in across the west coast providing especially the Sacramento Valley but most of the state of California with above average rains here and even snows as well looking at the rainfall looks pretty robust out here into California going through next week a few inches worth of rain again for the coastal areas there and even inland as well and then looking out west at the snowfall, decent snows there for the Sierras and the Rockies and drier further east as we really don't get a chance to see any moisture further to the east during that time frame. Now, as we go into the last week in February, things change again. So we're going to kind of be flip-flopping here in the weather pattern, and we're going to see colder air. The ensembles have been showing this for quite some time, and I actually have been consistent in looking at these as well putting these videos together and I do think we're gonna see some colder air now it might might be more modified cold air moving into western Canada and eventually down into the Pacific Northwest the closer we get toward the end of February and looking at this pattern this is going to this is going to lead to some higher rainfall amounts across the west and across the east with still dry weather with that ridge hanging on a little longer across the middle of the country and overall this is going to provide us with a little bit of snow for the west again and a little bit of snow further east especially here into the interior northeast like we've seen most of this month and then as we go into early March, this is a favorable setup for some type of significant storm system to traverse the country. All that energy out west will have to move east sometime, and whenever it does, probably into the first week or so of March, that's going to send that colder air, but modified cold air further east into the middle of the country, and that could set up shop for a potent storm track from the southern plains up through the Tennessee and Ohio River Valleys and on up into southeastern Canada to the northwest side wintry precipitation or some cold rain to the east and southeast side we're going to be looking at all rain with some heavier rain and possibly some severe weather so looking at that here you can see some active weather for the pacific northwest but look at the east now we're starting to get a lot more active here with some of the ensembles showing some higher precipitation here in this pattern and we have to keep an eye on it because it is early march after all that we're looking at here we have some of that instability the gulf of mexico is right there those dew points could be rising so We'll keep an eye on the severe weather threat during that March 1st through the 7th time. So if you're in the red here, there is a chance we could see some severe weather with that pattern if that significant storm system does in fact come into fruition as we go into that time frame. Keep an eye on it down here, especially for Dixie Alley and the Deep South. And then on the cold side, this could lead to more snow. And a lot of these areas that haven't seen a lot of snow this year across the northern plains up here toward Nebraska, the Dakotas there into portions there of the upper Midwest into Minnesota, northern Iowa, Wisconsin, up here into Michigan, and then into southeastern Canada as well. And this area in blue would be the area to watch for some heavier snowfall or a heavier snowstorm overall during that first week into March. We'll keep an eye on it as we do get closer. Make sure though, if you are liking this video so far, to press that like button down below. I do appreciate it. Also, if you do enjoy my weather forecasts and detailed weather forecasts at that, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and help me get to 100,000 subscribers by spring. Also, simply by subscribing down below, share this video with friends, family, and on social media, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Thursday out there.